Hi, and welcome to another session on time, speed and distance. In this session, we'll talk particularly about the questions which are based on trains, two trains crossing, train crossing a man, man is running and stuff like that. Basically, these questions can be divided in two broad categories. They are when a train is crossing a stationary object or when a train is crossing a non-stationary object. I messed up the spelling here. Okay, so train crossing a, an object in motion, so to say. To begin with, let us look at the simple case when the train is crossing a stationary object. That means it can be crossing a man, a pole, a deer or something which can be considered a point object. In that case, the time taken for the train to cross is whatever is the length of the train divided by the speed of the train. See, think of it this way. To cross a man, a pole, a point object, what is the distance that the train will have to cover? The distance is nothing else but the length of the train itself and at what speed it will have to cover it? Well, it will be the speed at which the train is running. And that is why the formula comes out as for time is length upon speed, length of the train divided by speed of the train. However, if it is cross crossing a platform or a bridge or maybe another train or any object which has a certain length, what will change? What will be different? Well, its speed is going to remain the same. What will change is, in terms of time taken, is the length that it needs to cover. Now, it not only needs to cover its own length, but it also needs to cover the length of the object that it is crossing. It might be a tra another train, it might be a bridge or whatever. So in this case, the time taken will be you add up both the lengths and then divided by the speed of the train. Now, what happens when the train is crossing a non-stationary object? Again, there are two sub cases when it is in the same direction or it is in the opposite direction. Here you will need to know a little bit of relative speed as well. Now, when Again, in same direction, the two cases are crossing a man, a pole or a point object or crossing a platform, bridge, another train, an object which has length. So the time taken will depend upon two things. The length that needs to be covered. If you are crossing a man, a pole, then the length which needs to be covered is just the length of the train. Whereas if you are crossing a platform, an object with a width, another train, then the train will need to cover its own length plus whatever is the length of the object and at what speed. See, that is where the kicker comes in. The speed will be if they are in the same direction, relative speed is speed of the train minus the speed of the object. And that will be speed of the train minus the speed of the object in case two as well, because they are running or moving in the same direction. However, when the direction becomes opposite, as you can see here, the speeds get added up. Two bodies when moving in opposite direction, their speeds get added up. Two bodies when they are moving in the same direction, you have to use the difference of the speeds. Now, let us take an example to clarify this idea. What I request you is to pause the video and solve these questions on your own and only then look at the solution. Okay, to continue with the solution. How much time will a train, which is 600 meters long and running at 72 km per hour, take to cross? And then there is a lot of data. The first thing that you should do in questions like this is have them in the same units. Say if this is 600 meters and this is kilometers per hour, the first thing that you should do is, is to convert it to meters per second. Now, how do you convert from kilometer per hour to meter per second? You multiply it with 5 by 18. And how much is 17 to 5 by 18? Well, 72 into 5 by 18, 72 by 18 is 4 into 5 gives me 20 meters per second. Not only that, I can see other kilometers per hour here also. So let me convert that as well. 5 meters per second. This 18 kilometer per hour also becomes 5 meter per second. This 36 kilometer per hour becomes 10 meter per second this 36 kilometers per hour, this also becomes 10 meters per second. And now let us look at the questions. 
The first one is how long will the train, which is 600 meter long, running at 20 meter per second, take to cross a man? So this, the length that the train needs to cover is 600 meters. At what speed? At 20, because that is the speed at which the train is running. So it will take 30 seconds for the same. What if the man was running in the same direction with 5 meters per second? The distance that needs to be covered is still 600, the length of the train. But the speed will now be the relative speed of the man and the train, which will be 20 minus 5. Why this minus 5? Because they are running in the same direction. So my answer will be 600 by 15 or 40 seconds. How will this change if instead of the same direction, they were running in opposite direction? Well, the man and train are now in opposite direction. The only difference, so to say, which will come in is, is in the case of relative speed. And what will be the relative speed now? It will be 20 plus 5 because the two bodies are moving in opposite directions. So this becomes 600 by 25, which becomes how much? This becomes 24 seconds. How about when uh, the train needs to cross a 200 meter long platform? Now, the distance that the train needs to cover is not just 600, but an extra 200 meter comes into the picture for the platform. And what is the speed? Well, the speed is whatever was the speed of the train because the platform cannot move. It is a static object. So what is my answer in this case? It becomes 800 by 20 or 40 seconds. Very similarly, it's a 200 meter long train now, which means 600 plus 200 or the total distance which needs to be covered, length of the first train plus the length of the second train. They are moving in the same direction at the speed. The other train is moving at 10. So the relative speed will be 20 minus 10. So this becomes 800 by 10 or 80 seconds. And finally, in the last case, when the distance needs to be covered is still 600 plus 200 because the other train is 200 meter long, length of the train plus length of the object here and the relative speed, since they are moving in opposite direction, they will get added up or 800 by 30 or 80 by 3 seconds, which is going to be your answer in this case. So as you can see, these are the various cases which are possible when you have a train and uh, the other thing is a moving object or a stationary object, it is moving in the same direction or in the opposite direction or not moving at all. These are the broadly the cases that you can get in questions on time, speed and distance, which are based on trains. With this, I'd like to wrap up the session. You can use Twitter and my Twitter handle at the rate Ravi Handa to provide feedback. You can also connect with me over email and my mail ID is ravihanda at gmail.com. Thank you guys.